Chapter 4 of The Way of Peace. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Andrea Fiore. The Way of Peace by James Allen. Chapter 4 The Realization of Selfless Love. It is said that Michelangelo saw in every rough block of stone a thing of beauty, awaiting the master hand to bring it into reality. Even so, within each, there reposes the divine image awaiting the master hand of faith and the chisel of patience to bring it into manifestation. And that divine image is revealed and realized as stainless, selfless love. Hidden deep in every human heart, though frequently covered up with a mass of hard and almost impenetrable accretions, is the spirit of divine love, whose holy and spotless essence is undying and eternal. It is the truth in man, it is that which belongs to the supreme, that which is real and immortal. All else changes and passes away. This alone is permanent and imperishable. And to realize this love by ceaseless diligence in the practice of the highest righteousness, to live in it and to become fully conscious in it, is to enter into immortality here and now, is to become one with truth one with God, one with the central heart of all things, and to know our own divine and eternal nature. To reach this love, to understand and experience it, one must work with great persistency and diligence upon his heart and mind, must ever renew his patience and keep strong his faith, for there will be much to remove, much to accomplish, before the divine image is revealed in all its glorious beauty. He who strives to reach and to accomplish the divine will be tried to the very uttermost, and this is absolutely necessary, for how else could one acquire that sublime patience, without which there is no real wisdom, no divinity? Ever and anon, as he proceeds, all his work will seem to be futile, and his efforts appear to be thrown away. Now and then a hasty touch will mar his image and perhaps when he imagines his work is almost completed, he will find what he imagined to be the beautiful form of divine love utterly destroyed, and he must begin again, with his past bitter experience to guide and help him. But he who has resolutely set himself to reach the highest, recognizes no such thing as defeat. All failures are apparent, not real. Every slip, every fall, every return to selfishness, is a lesson learned, and experience gained, from which a golden grain of wisdom is extracted, helping the striver toward the accomplishment of his lofty object, to recognize that of our vices we can frame a ladder, if we will but tread, beneath our feet each deed of shame, is to enter the way that leads unmistakably toward the divine, and the failings of one who thus recognizes are so many dead selves upon which he rises, as upon stepping-stones, to higher things. Once come to regard your failings, your sorrows and sufferings, as so many voices telling you plainly where you are weak and faulty, where you fall below the true and the divine, you will then begin to ceaselessly watch yourself, and every slip, every pang of pain, will show you where you are to set to work, and what you have to remove out of your heart, in order to bring it nearer to the likeness of the divine, nearer to the perfect love. And as you proceed day by day, detaching yourself more and more from the inward selfishness, the love that is selfless will gradually become revealed to you. And when you are growing patient and calm, when your petulances, tempers, and irritabilities are passing away from you, the more powerful lusts and prejudices seek to dominate and enslave you, then you will know that the divine is awakening within you, that you are drawing near to the eternal heart, that you are not far from that selfless love, the possession of which is peace and immortality. Divine love is distinguished from human love in this supremely important particular. It is free from partiality. Human love clings to a particular object to the exclusion of all else, and when that object is removed, Great and deep is the resultant suffering to the one who loves. Divine love embraces the whole universe, and without clinging to any part, 
yet contains within itself the whole, and he who comes to it by gradually purifying and broadening his human loves, until all the selfish and impure elements are burnt out of them, ceases from suffering. It is because human loves are narrow and confined, and mingled with selfishness, that they cause suffering. No suffering can result from that love, which is so absolutely pure that it seeks nothing for itself. Nevertheless, human loves are absolutely necessary as steps toward the divine, and no soul is prepared to partake of divine love until it has become capable of the deepest and most intense human love. It is only by passing through human loves and human sufferings that divine love is reached and realized. All human loves are perishable, like the forms to which they cling, but there is a love that is imperishable, and that does not cling to appearances. All human loves are counterbalanced by human hates, but there is a love that admits of no opposite or reaction, divine and free from all taint of self, that sheds its fragrance on all alike. Human loves are reflections of the divine love, and draw the soul nearer to the reality, the love that knows neither sorrow nor change. It is well that the mother, clinging with passionate tenderness to the little helpless form of flesh that lies on her bosom, should be overwhelmed with the dark waters of sorrow when she sees it laid on the cold earth. It is well that her tears should flow and her heart ache, for only thus can she be reminded of the evanescent nature of the joys and objects of sense, and be drawn nearer to the eternal and imperishable reality. It is well that lover, brother, sister, husband, wife, should suffer deep anguish, and be enveloped in gloom when the visible object of their affection is torn from them, so that they may learn to turn their affections toward the invisible source of all, where alone abiding satisfaction is to be found. It is well that the proud, the ambitious, the self-seeking, should suffer defeat, humiliation, and misfortune, that they should pass through the scorching fires of affliction, for only thus can the wayward soul be brought to reflect upon the enigma of life, only thus can the heart be softened and purified, and prepared to receive the truth. When the sting of anguish penetrates the heart of human love, when gloom and loneliness and desertion cloud the soul of friendship and trust, then it is that the heart turns toward the sheltering love of the eternal, and finds its rest in its silent peace. And whosoever comes to this love is not turned away comfortless, is not pierced with anguish, nor surrounded with gloom, and is never deserted in the dark hour of trial. The glory of divine love can only be revealed in the heart that is chastened by sorrow, and the image of the heavenly state can only be perceived and realized when the lifeless, formless accretions of ignorance and self are hewn away. Only that love that seeks no personal gratification or reward, that does not make distinctions, and that leaves behind no heartaches, can be called divine. Men clinging to self and to the comfortless shadows of evil are in the habit of thinking of divine love as something belonging to a God who is out of reach, as something outside themselves, and that must forever remain outside. Truly the love of God is ever beyond the reach of self, but when the heart and mind are emptied of self, then the selfless love, the supreme love, the love that is of God or good, becomes an inward and abiding reality. And this inward realization of holy love is none other than the love of Christ, that is so much talked about and so little comprehended. The love that not only saves the soul from sin, but lifts it also above the power of temptation. But how may one attain to this sublime realization?